An element that is commonly associated with balloons and floats and talking like a chipmunk is at the center of a global crisis. A crisis that is partially responsible for the bankruptcy of Party City, but also has very serious implications for healthcare and for physics research. I'm Sanjana Curtis and this is episode 3 of Stardust, a series where you and I will do a deep dive into the elements of the periodic table, where in the universe these elements were created, astrophysically speaking, and their role on Earth in our lives and in science. Today we will talk about the rise and fall of helium. With only two protons in its atomic nucleus, helium is the lightest noble gas. It is lighter than air. It was produced shortly after the Big Bang as the universe expanded and cooled and neutrons and protons were able to assemble into nuclei. However, stars also fuse hydrogen to helium, and so some of the helium in the universe was produced in this way. Which brings me to something very interesting. Helium was discovered in the sun before it was found and isolated on the Earth. In 1868, a French astronomer traveled to India to take a spectrum off the sun during a total solar eclipse. He found a very bright yellow line in the spectrum that was unidentified and came to be associated with a yet undiscovered element taking the name helium from Helios for the sun. The thing is, even though helium is the second most abundant element in the universe, on Earth it is quite rare. On Earth, helium is generated deep underground by the radioactive decay of elements like uranium and thorium. This helium then seeps through the rocks and gets trapped in pockets of natural gas, from where it can be extracted and used. Once helium is extracted and vented into the atmosphere, it eventually escapes the gravitational pull of the Earth. It is gone out into space. That's what happens to the helium in our party balloons once we're done with them. But the most important use of helium is not in party balloons, but for cryogenics. Helium is unique among the elements because liquid helium can get very, very cold, almost as cold as outer space. And for this reason, it's used for cooling the superconducting magnets that are in MRI machines. We are currently in the middle of a global helium shortage, producing headlines like this, and even back in 2015, television like this. The most alarming thing about a helium shortage, though, is that it has implications for people's access to MRIs, raising costs, restricting access to life-saving medical diagnoses. Additionally, low temperature physics research has been impacted, leading people to pull back on experiments that require liquid helium. Just a handful of countries, including the US, Russia, Algeria, and Qatar, dominate helium production in the world. And so if there's a production issue in any one of these countries, the results of that are seen globally in the prices of helium. The US government was the first to extract and store helium for strategic purposes, such as attack blimps during World War I. It stockpiled helium in the 1960s and began selling it off in the 1990s. Starting July of this year, the Bureau of Land Management is reportedly selling off the federal helium system to private buyers. What will be the fate of this precious resource? Remains to be seen.